couple. But anyway, so I'm going to say just a few words and turn it over to my friend Alyssa, who will really moderate this conversation. Uh, one of the things that I'm most proud about right now with Ligare is this energy that we have around spiritual direction as a, I would say, as a gift to the psychedelic uh, landscape or the community that's forming. It's one of the things that Christianity can offer, I think that does offer. And I've been in spiritual direction myself for 25 years. It was part of my discernment for the ordination in the Episcopal Church because I needed a little more deepening. The powers that be thought and that they were right. I didn't think that at the time, but they were right. And so an hour, a year of spiritual direction twice a month was a was a was such a gift. And I've continued in spiritual direction on and off since then so and mostly on like if i ever took a break it'd be for three months till i found a new person so it's been a really important part is a really important part of my preparation for my experience at hopkins and then the integration afterwards that after that was psilocybin as part of a research study at johns hopkins so uh i'm proud of this work we're doing because it's been so meaningful to me and i see what's possible for other people and so many people in christianity don't even know this exists so part of what we want to do is bring this into the awareness for a lot more people. So I'm going to stop talking and turn it over to my friend Alyssa, who's been convening this group. Hi, thank you so much. Um, wonderful to see some new faces here. Um, I'm so excited to talk about spiritual direction. And as Hunt mentioned, there's so many people that are unfamiliar, unfamiliar with this ministry. And so we're doing these quarterly calls to just kind of talk a little bit more about what spiritual direction is answer any questions people might have, and then also share with um, you all. In January, we launched our first series of group spiritual direction through Ligare. And so these are small groups that they'll meet once a month for a couple hours, um, and it goes for a six-month time frame. And the groups range from four to six people in the group, so very small and intimate and just explore anything related to spiritual unfolding. Um, and something that's unique about Ligari's offering is the, there's several spiritual directors on here. And so a, a lot of times uh, psychedelics is not a part of those conversations. It's not unheard of, but um, we recognize that this is kind of a specialty area of topic discussion. And so we really wanted to open that space for people to explore how this fits in with their spiritual religious lives. Um, and the groups have been absolutely amazing. The feedback from participants and from all of the directors that are supporting that work has just been mind blowing and extremely heart opening and um, inspiring. So before we get started, I wanna just let us drop in for a minute. I'm gonna read a poem from Donna Falds. So if you wanna just take a breath and settle in for just a moment. Arriving here. Thank you again for being with us. One breath at a time. Breathe with me in the rhythm of mountain streams, in the hypnotizing cadence of waves breaking on the shore. Breathe in the peace that plays just beneath the agitated surface of the mind. I am the breath that expresses your connection to the silence, to abiding forgiveness, to the shining light of spirit in your heart. Your own truth, your own true breath can release you from the person of your fears and plumb the depths of your awareness. It all starts here the choice to breathe, relax, and feel, the choice to witness without judgment, and allow the truth of life to be revealed. Taking a couple nice deep breaths. And when you feel ready, looking up at the screen and taking in all the faces of this community, just sacred space to be able to join together. Thank you. With that, I would like to introduce to you two of our guest speakers today. So with us, I have Stacy Harder and James Cress. 
And um, Stacy is a participant in one of the current offerings of spiritual direction. And James has been supporting the work with the spiritual directors and will be um, soon offering in this next series, a uh, spiritual direction group. So with that, I would like to delightedly ask each of you to share a little bit about yourself. Um, maybe I'll start with you, James, and then we'll have Stacy jump in. Certainly, yeah. Uh, as Alyssa mentioned, my name is James Cress. I live in Kirkland, Washington, which is a suburb of Seattle. Uh, I've lived here most of my life, 51 years plus. Um, I'm married. I have three children, uh, all of whom are grown and married. Uh, one grandson, another grandson on the way next month. So really excited about that. Um, I, I, I come to Ligare with uh, 25 years of pastoral ministry in the evangelical Christian tradition. Uh, my seminary degree is from Liberty University. Um, and I served in a couple of very large evangelical churches here in Seattle. Uh, went through my own deconstruction of that. It was, it was a long one, and the details of that can be for another time in my ongoing memoir. But um, it, it ended with me leaving uh, that seven years ago. And uh, I am now a licensed staff minister at the Center for Spiritual Living in Seattle and uh, on my way toward finishing my ordination process with them. And uh, I'm absolutely loving it. I'm finding it to be a spiritual home for me that is both deepening and expansive. And uh, my, my experience with psychedelics started, I was prior to that, I was a, you know, a, a, let's just say a, a white collar evangelical Christian, you know, no drinking, no smoking, no, none of that. So <laughs> including no drugs, but I was, uh, I was introduced to psychedelics about three years ago and have uh, had numerous uh, experiences with various plant medicines, both in private one-on-one -on -one settings, as well as group settings, um, all of which have been held in um, a sacred ceremonial set and setting. So that experience, so then, then from there, uh, a friend told me about Ligare uh, a couple years ago at least, and um, immediately was just drawn like a, a magnet to a community where there is the intersection of uh, Christianity and psychedelics. And I just so resonate with what Hunt said and, and believe with all my heart that Christianity does have a gift to offer the psychedelic community, and that is spiritual direction and guidance. Um, I've, I've been through a, a training program at Naropa University last year for psychedelic assisted therapy. I'm in a, a facilitator training program this year. And, and I noticed that there are a lot of medical voices and therapeutic voices in the space needed and, and valuable, but there's not a lot of spiritual direction that's there. And so um, just really grateful to be here. And uh, I, I've received so much from this community in terms of support and uh, affirmation, uh, being able to talk it through, talk my experiences through with spiritually minded people, really um, just, just encourage me. And so uh, I'm really open and willing to give back some of what, some of what I've received here. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an avid studier of the Christian mystics, um, currently studying uh, Hildegard of Bilgen and, um, and others outside of the tradition, you know, Rumi, Hafiz, Meister Eckhart. Um, I'm a big fan of Richard Rohr. Uh, I've read a lot of his books and I've taught classes uh, on his books at the Center for Spiritual Living where I'm at. Um, and I found that in my current church, I've had a real, um, I've, I've been able to really help people kind of kind of deconstruct and reconstruct their relationship with Christianity. Um, basically, people who have an interest in, in God and Jesus, but a disinterest in how they experienced it in their particular church. That's a really delicate uh, path to walk. And, uh, and yet psychedelics have been very helpful for me and others in helping just find and discover that goodness that that is in. So, um, yeah, and just it, to see how the Ligari community is growing 
and evolving uh, just gives me chills when I say it, even now as I say it, it just gives me chills. <laughs> and uh, there's definitely, uh, I, I believe, just the, the, the presence of the, of the divine, uh, the favorite expression of mine of late is love is an intelligence that seeks expression. And so I see that expression of love in the Ligari community collectively and individually in the people that come here and share their stories. So it's a real delight and a real honor to, to be here with you and uh, really um, sharing and growing this offering of spiritual direction in the psychedelic community. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Miss Stacy, would you chime in with all about you? Sure. Thanks, James. Um, and thanks, Alyssa and Hunt, for having me here. It's I, I and I meant it when I said Hunt. I'm I'm a big fan because um, you know what you all are doing is you know groundbreaking. I'm sure you know. Um, and you know, sitting here is not something that I ever saw myself doing um so i uh I, I was raised in the church i was raised in the little methodist church um growing up and um you know went through um several evangelical churches and, and charismatic churches and you know was um had like a, a sort of a long, you know, um, love hate relationship with Jesus and his people and, um, you know, and really had a long struggle. And, um, you know, I, I shared that I'm in recovery. I've been clean and sober for 11 years. And, um, my, um, my real, like rediscovering my spirituality came through like a 12 step program and, and, you know, Richard Rohr wrote a great, you know, breathing underwater, um, that was my first introduction to him was that, um, that book on the 12 steps and, and Christianity. And, um, you know, I've, I've never been able to, to, as much as I've tried, I've never been able to totally get away from my Christian roots. It keeps pulling me back. So, um, about two years ago, I, uh, I kind of got the call to, um, go into ministry, which is again, not something that, I ever thought that I would do. And so I just, uh, I, I'm a, I'm a mom, I'm a married mom of two. I've been, I have a, two teenagers. I've been homeschooling for a long time. And, um, you know, I kind of thought that was it. I knew that I had been a nurse. I knew that I would go back to some sort of full-time work at some point, but I didn't know what it was. Um, and so I got this, you know, really hard nudge to, um, go into ministry and what you were saying, James, about there being a spiritual hole in, you know, that area um, of psychedelics, I feel that there's that in the area of addiction treatment, you know, that we have mm -hmm. that, that medical model and, and a psychological model. And, you know, that when you look into addiction treatment, you find um, really hard Christianity, but there's not um, an open model. And so, you know, my, my, I feel that my, my push, you know, kind of from the divine has been to, um, be, I'm getting, I'm, I'm starting seminary in, in September and, and I'm going to, um, be getting my degree in, in inter, interreligious chaplaincy and spiritual direction. And, um, you know, I want to be in that place to help people connect with whatever their own idea of the divine and a higher power is, regardless of what mine is, which I'm still figuring out. And so I, you know, I, I joke now that like, if you, if you want to stop believing in God, you should study God. And, you know, the, the past, the past two years, you know, is like, abs I don't call it deconstructing. It's like absolutely obliterated you know, into dust, my idea of whatever I had, my concept of God is. And so I've said, you know, now I kind of feel like I'm floating untethered in the universe and I'm trying to figure out, you know, and um, so during my studies, I, um, I came across the idea of the plant medicines and I had had a friend in the program who had started talking to me about wanting to have a psychedelic experience for the for you know healing of a traumatic situation and um 
you know, being in recovery, I was very opposed to that idea, you know, and I, I said, that's absolutely ridiculous. We don't do that. And um, then I started actually doing research into um, AA and Bill Wilson, and he, he started doing research into psychedelics um, before his death. And, um, and so I, you know, I'm a, we talk about our anagrams. I'm a five. I'm I'm an investigator, so I like to do my deep dives. And um, I I wrote a paper on um, ayahuasca and and plant medicine and uh, the Church of Santa Dime and um, started getting really interested in that. But um, I'm on antidepressants and I wouldn't be able to take ayahuasca. And um, so I started looking at other things, and that's when um, the Esquire article popped up. And, um, and I thought, okay, well, this is interesting. <laughs> and it was right when that came out and I started to read the John Johns Hopkins studies and, um, you know, cause I'm, I have a nursing background. So I, I love, you know, going into the, the medical deep dives too. And, um, I was like, wow, wow, this is, you know, this is really interesting. And, you know, I, I've never taken psychedelics. Um, I still haven't taken psychedelics um it's uh it's definitely something that I'm still exploring the idea of doing but um when the opportunity came up to um go into spiritual direction you know I, I sat in on an open house for Ligare and um started just doing more research and you know um started doing the group spiritual direction and you know it's been about the psychedelics as much as it's been about connection um, and, um, it's just been beautiful. You know, Alyssa has created this really safe, sacred space for us. And like, I, I hear your voice, you know, sometimes when I'm in a situation where I'm stressed out and I close my eyes and I hear you saying like, let's drop in, you know, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, and it's, um, you know, it's really in it's informed little parts of my life, you know, in my spiritual practice. And um, so I'm just, you know, I'm on the journey right now and really excited to see where, um, where it's going to take me. And I, I would love to, at some point, you know, I see the way this is helping the, um, the recovery community. Um, and I would love to, if it's, you know, in the plan at some point to, to be a psychedelic facilitator, you know, way down the road. Um, because, you know, I, I'm in a place where, um, I experience death of people I love on a regular basis. And, um, but I also experience, you know, people living in a lot of pain, which to me is, is harder to see than the death. And, um, and I've seen the, you know, this give hope for some people, or at least, you know, relief, um, from, from that pain. And so anyway, I could go on and on. So thank you. But that's, mm. <laughs> that's a little bit about me. Thank you. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much, Stacey. You always just, yeah, you just bring such light and I love, um, the willingness to talk about some of these challenging topics. Like these are, um, yeah, like you said, groundbreaking work that's being done. I also appreciate too, something I'm just going to note you, you mentioned here is like, you have not had an experience, but you've got all, the, all this curiosity. And, and in these groups, we're finding that, that there's just such a, a expansive kind of array of people that are showing up to these groups. So some people have had many, many experiences and then others who have not. And um, something really amazing about group spiritual direction work is the right people always land together. Um, and just the way that it, the divine kind of creates this amazing tapestry and exploration so with that um do you have any other things you'd like to share on kind of the experience what that looks like um as far as the group spiritual direction with Ligari me or James or is, that, is that for both of us yeah, yeah. both of you <laughs> you go sure. James <laughs> yeah no the um the group spiritual direction uh, experience at Ligari is is really a, a, a container that's, um, I would call it open, curious, uh, non-judgmental, and safe for people to explore everything. And um, 
uh, I also help facilitate our local Washington group here, you know, and we, you know, we've even had the discussions that, you know, even though we have Christianity and Christian in our, in our naming, um, you all, all faiths or non-faiths are welcome, really. Um, it's all about the, you know, it's all about the exploration there. And so, um, you know, it's a, it's a place to explore faith and spirituality. It's a place to explore uh, psychedelics. We have a lot of people, you know, who are, uh, you know, as Alyssa said, experienced and others who uh, haven't, but are curious, you know, and wanting to know. So, you know, we do a lot of that. Um, and for those who are involved in, um, you know, upcoming uh, experiences, you know, there can be some um, support around, you know, preparation or, you know, integration of experiences. There was a, a group somewhere, I don't know if it was a spiritual group or somewhere, you know, but but uh, uh, in, in, a, in an experience, uh, the Buddha came up, you know, and this is someone who is Christian, you know, it's like, whoa, what, what, are you, what do we make of that? <laughs> um, it's just so fun to, to sit with that and again, un, unpack it. Um, you know, we have a, we have a consciousness that there's, there's nothing broken, or there's nothing that needs to be fixed. Um, and in the, in the world of psychedelics and spirituality, what there is to be made is connection, you know, the idea that healing is not fixing, as much as healing is whole ing, like, uh, I think Richard Rohr says that, you know, W H O L I N G, that is bringing those fragmented parts of ourselves into awareness and consciousness and, and alignment and really connecting and reconnecting again to the inner goodness and the inner completeness and the inner perfection that we all are, you know, and, and so, um, you know, that, 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 that's really, that's really what it is. And, um, you know, Stacy, I really resonated with what you said, you know, of, of uh, you keep kind of keep getting pulled back toward, you know, Christianity. I, I find that's true, you know, for me. And, um, and so there's, you know, there's openness for that, but there's no expectation of that either. You know, the, the, the groups, I'll, the one last thought I'd share about them is they're really co-created. Uh, there's, there's not a, you know, there, I mean, there's the facilitators, yes, who hold and create the space, but from there, it's really a co-creation and there's a, a, an organicity and, and flow to the dialogue that is really um, influenced by the, the, the group experience and the group consciousness. So a lot of richness, um, a lot of great connections that are made, you know, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's the, the beauty of Zoom world is, uh, you know, we've got Stacy in Florida and me in Washington and all points in between represented. So, <laughs> and, and all over the world for that matter. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's what I'd add. Mm. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. I, you know, I wasn't sure what the experience of, well, I've never been in spiritual direction before. So it was still, you know, as a concept, it was relatively new. Um, and I wasn't sure, you know, from the group aspect and then also doing it in a virtual way. Um, I, starting with COVID, you know, I had done 12 step meetings online, but they were still with people that I knew. Um, and so to be in a new space with people I'd never met before. Um, I wasn't sure how it would feel like as an authentic space um, for me. And, you know, I've, I approach most spaces like with total transparency. You know, I'm just, I kind of am who I am. And I think that that, um, and Alyssa is the same way. And, and I think that that helps other people show up in that, that way, you know, if I bring kind of like, me and all my messiness and, you know, um, authentic self to this space, it, it gives other people, um, uh, they feel safe doing the same thing. Um, and I think that that's what I'm seeing so far with spiritual direction is, you know, it's, um, it's about what I bring to it as much as, you know, what I'm seeking to get out of it. You know, if I bring my whole self, I'm gonna get even more out of it and um you know the people that we've had and I think it's you know it's been this perfect little group that we've had mm -hmm. you know of people from different walks of life 
um, you know, different worlds spiritually, different places on the, you know, what they've experienced with psychedelics. Um, we've all just really shown up as our authentic selves. And I don't think it's ever felt uncomfortable or never judgmental um, and just been a really supportive space for people to say where they're at and um, be able to sit and, and safely hear people's reflections back. And um, I don't know, it's just, I don't know if I know what, what I thought I was going to get out of it. But I know that, you know, like I emailed you recently, Alyssa, and, you know, I, um, so I have like, kind of like my little trinity of um, spiritual practices where, you know, I have my church and I have AA and I also practice um, Zen and I've been doing that for about six or seven months. And I, I told her, you know, I was sitting in um, with my Sangha um, meditating and like something that she had said popped in and and really helped me um in that moment and it's really neat um just how um how my worlds can kind of fluidly you know inhabit each other so i you know i don't know the role that this is going to play going forward but i know it's created like this real richness you know, to my life. And the group aspect is so good because I get to interact with people that I probably like would not have interacted with otherwise. Um, and I mean that in the best way, you know, that um, I just wouldn't have had the opportunity otherwise. And um, we just, it's, it's been sacred and beautiful. You know, it really has. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, yeah. So that's, yeah. I love that. Like, I just see this image of, and um, it feels like a quilt. Like we have all these different pieces that came together and then you look at it and you're like, Oh my goodness, how, what? And <laughs> uh, something that's just been, is so, what, something I love about group spiritual direction is <clears throat> we meet once a month. And so there's this lag time in between and in our groups we do some of the groups have chosen there's like a whatsapp or a signal group so there's some communication in between but the majority of the interaction happens for those two hours that we're together and um it's always just amazing that the themes the things that get woven and are they're just so um united uh and what one person shares is just what somebody else in the group needed to hear and and it just carries through in this just beautifully fluid and sacred way um and yeah it's so it's always it, it is kind of a spiritual direction is just this kind of sitting back and watching this process unfold and, and just being a part of it and we've got a couple other spiritual directors that are on this call and I think that um I probably would see nods of agreement but as the spiritual direction team we also have an advisory group and um do do work together um and so we've been in discussion about how all of these different groups, I think we launched eight or 10, eight to 10 groups in January. We kicked off um, this first set with, and uh, the one resonating thing we keep hearing is everybody has been doing group and spiritual direction work for some time. And there's something different about these groups. And I'll say from my experiences, stepping in that first meeting and Stacy, you touched on this, just the transparency. Um, everybody just went so deep um there was just such raw vulnerable openness in just that first that first meeting and it really set the container and and not only that but I also was just blown away and James you touched on just the caliber and the hearts that are drawn to this community in general or are, are just so open and not only did people go deep, but the rest of the group just held it in the most beautiful way. And there's been um, some people who have not done any spiritual direction or group spiritual direction work, but there's just this capacity to navigate the container of what this means. And in spiritual direction, we don't offer advice to each other. We we ask mm -hmm. questions and we, we explore together. That's unfolding. And um, the group wisdom, really, it is a unique experience to each group. 
and absolutely amazing. Yes, yes, yes. So a little bit, I guess I'll talk kind of the logistics of what these groups look like. Again, they meet for two hours and this was our first round and we, we planned to have up to six people in the groups and we've discerned that two hours goes really, really fast. And this, these groups are, there's so much that wants to come forward. And so we're going to kind of scale that back slightly. I think we're going to aim for four to five. That feels like the sweet spot in conversations with the rest of the directors. Um, and so there's a two hour when two hour meeting time once a month. And, um, the groups, some choose to engage with email or some other form of communication outside of that that group work but um, each participant has there's kind of and it's varies depending on who the facilitating spiritual director is there's time for some contemplative practice and reflection but the majority of the group work is each participant having time to just share what's on their heart and maybe some provoking questions that are offered from the director prior to the the meeting time um and yeah, but the, the sweet spot again of, of about five people that meet once a month and that goes on for six month period. Um, and I also just want to open to any questions that anybody in the audience might have regarding this work, regarding spiritual direction in general. If there's anything that's come up for people. One other thing that we've decided to do, um, we launched, again, I said eight or 10 groups in that January, February time start. And um, what we're going to go do going forward is, is stagger them. So we will soon set the next launch date and there will probably be fewer meetings to start with. We'll have one or two that open and then it'll kind of continue through the, throughout the year where every month or two we have a couple groups beginning up so that people have a chance to jump in because anybody that missed this first window has now been in a waiting period. Um, so we are in the actively working right now on getting the next couple sessions started. Yeah. Well, there's no other questions. Do you have anything else that's coming up for you, James or Stacy, that you'd like to talk about in regards to the spiritual direction? The, uh, the the imagery that's coming to me just listening to Stacy and you you talk that I would just add to this process is um, is it's like a spiritual midwifery that you know the the experience of that you know it's 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 kind of the the birth or the emergence of a soul but but it's the it's the reemergence of it as well you know again these aren't one time happenings it's just that constant um, you know emergence of an individual's true authentic essence in in being and i think again another dimension that i like about spiritual direction in the spiritual direction space is really a place to just come and and be um, there's really nothing to do or accomplish or strive but really a place to rest into the peace and the goodness of who you are as an individual who we are as people and goodness of divine source spirit you know whatever you want to call it or not so there's a refreshment and there's a nourishment that comes from from being a part of it that i find very um very enriching mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i hope it's okay i'm gonna call you out joy um but we have another <laughs> <laughs> because we've got another one of the spiritual directors here I just wanted to offer she Joy's been working on this first round as well and if there's anything else you'd like to add she's an amazing director doing a lot with Ligare oh gosh um thank you for the opportunity to speak I I really as a spiritual director I will tell I tell people that I'm here to listen to your story and um, if you will tell me your story, I will listen all day. Um, and that's really why I hopped on this call was because I wanted to listen to all of your stories. Um, I, I would I would just echo so much of what Stacy and James have said that the group that I facilitated, and I'm, 
really aware of this is that, you know, we have somebody in their 80s and then we have somebody in their 30s um, and they hold each other in a way that is just extraordinary. We have two people in the group. There's five people in the group. We have two that have never done psychedelics before. So that also just brings this beautiful um, sense of, but they're there because they really want to know. You know, they, they're so, and there's a sense, and, and, and in spiritual direction, I think one of the things that we're listening for is the longing of a person's heart. What what are you longing for? Because to me, and that's in my training, I trained with with Shalem, um, but that's one of the things that we learned was that that longing of the heart is God. That's the holy calling. Um, and so when they they you know the ones who haven't participated um, talk about why they want to and what that longing is for them. Um, and then the the rest of the group is able to just respond to it so beautifully. And where else would you get a chance to talk about this stuff? If you if someone has had a psychedelic experience, I I trust that um, you know that that many people have and have never had a, a chance to talk about it. And it's not something, I mean, I, I did it one time in the grocery store with a friend of, um, a friend of my daughter's mother. I saw her in the grocery store and then I was just kind of, I don't know what would happen. I just kind of blurted it out. Yeah, I'm doing this work with, and you don't do it in the grocery store with, you know, with the mother of, of your daughter, you know, <laughs> friend, it just doesn't work well. But I think, I know I just wanted to talk about it right? And so that's what this is. It's an opportunity to talk about what that experience has been like, what it has brought up, or why it is that that we want to do it. You know, what it is that we're longing for. What's that longing in our heart? So um, I would just, I would just add that um, to, to the group. Thanks for, thanks for calling me out. Thank I think, you. <laughs> Can I have something, <laughs> Yes, I see a hand up. Robert, would you like to jump in? Do you have a, a question? There we go. Yeah. So um, thank you all for this. Uh, is there an expectation for what happens after six months? That seems like a really short time to get to know somebody. Yeah. Right? Yes. Um, that is an ongoing discussion. And what we've decided... Um, because the groups have gotten so close that we are inviting if the group wants to continue practicing together that we would, I think all of the directors that are currently working have said, yes, I would stay and keep this group going. Um, and dependent on um, interest in that, there, there may be other people added to that group to give it enough energy to move forward. But I, my, my guess as well is with the groups that have chosen to start um, WhatsApp groups and signal groups that those conversations, I, I feel like there's connections that are going to carry forward most mm -hmm. definitely. So I think there'll be informal opportunities and then formal opportunities to continue that work together. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then we also, um, we've had people interested in one-on-one uh, -on -one group spiritual direction and a lot of, not all of, but a lot of our uh, spiritual directors working with this program um, do offer one-on-one -on -one direction and, and we just absolutely adore and respect the work of all of them. And so we can make those connections happen too, if that's of interest to people. Can I add one more thing, Alyssa? Yes, please. Um, you know, it, it just, you know, it came up when Joey was talking. Um, like, I love hearing people's stories too. Like that's, you know, I think that's part of why I want to go into the work um, that I do. Um, and I think that that's um, a facet of the group spiritual direction that I, um, I think we're getting that we wouldn't get in 
a one-on-one. Um, you know, in recovery, one of the things that I've always loved is um, watching other people grow, um, like watching the miracle happen. And um, and I didn't anticipate having that with the group spiritual direction. And I think it's also, you know, it's empowering as a participant. And I see that it's, you know, the, the other people that are um, in my group, they get to watch themselves grow, but they also get to watch the way they participate in somebody else's growth. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's such an empowering thing for them um, because we forget that we can be um, an element in somebody else's growth. And I think that gives us more, um, more value to our, our own spiritual experience. Um, And so that's been, um, I just, I love watching those little, um, revelations that people have you know when you get the space like you said like where else can you talk about this stuff you know where where in life do we really get a space to sit and talk about the spiritual parts of our life you know um I, my studies have been um primarily online and so i haven't had really a space to talk about um some of the changes that have been going on with me spiritually and, you know, I always uh, tell people that, that I work with in recovery, you know, like the shit lives up front, you know, in your head. And when you talk, you kind of clear that out and the solution's always behind it, you know, but, but I have to open my mouth and get that other stuff out. And then all of a sudden I'll have the, oh, oh, like those moments. And um, so to have it for myself, but then also to watch somebody else have it, it's beautiful. You know, it's, and that's the, that's what you get in a group situation, you know, that, that you don't get in that one-on-one, you know, and, and I hadn't anticipated that. And that's just been really neat for me. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's so amazing. I absolutely agree. And it's always, you know, you start this group and we, it's religion and psychedelics and you think, okay, what's going to come. And it's just such I mean, so people bringing on some days just deep, deep, deep aching hearts and being held in this community in such a beautiful way and being able to just voice, oh, this hurts really bad. And I feel like I'm not being very spiritual right now, but I'm so mad <laughs> or just celebrating some of these ec- ecstatic joys in their life and things like this, like, oh, I had an experience and I don't know what to make of this. And I, oh, it was wonderful, but I also have all these really confusing previous beliefs about it. And now I don't know where God fits in my life or what God even means. And, um, just conversations that are so, so rich and evocative um, and just held in just this incredible grace of the, of the group. Yeah. Really is a special experience. Mm. Alyssa, I would just add to, I just thought uh, to, to Robert's question about timing, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, an awareness that I bring, you know, is that the the six month is a uh, it's it's a co pre agreed upon stopping point, but that stopping point is not a limitation. So, you know, if there's an agreement or a sense of of people wanting to continue collectively or individually, that's that's wide open. Um, that's what you know I I I bring to it, and and I think Alyssa and Stacy have touched on that too. So just to affirm that. <laughs> Yes. Thank you. Agreed. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause that's a, that is a weird, like as we started nearing the second half of our groups we're like, okay, wait, I don't know. I think there's going to be people who are not done yet yeah. uh, and want to continue together. <clears throat> and uh, that's been the fun part too. It, it, it's again, we've all done spiritual direction and um, those that are facilitating, but this is different. There's different aspects to it. And um, spiritual direction and as a ministry, it's typically a very ongoing process. And so opening the door for that continued work is, is really important. Mm-hmm. I think some of the, the deepest work we are doing is really developing a sense of community. We've just seen such rupture. Um, and as people are going through these confusing phases of deconstruction, reconstruction, and a lot of people have lost a sense of really tight knit community. Mm and places to mm. discuss 
um, mm. their divine lights. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you said that, Alyssa. Again, I don't want to say too much, but I think that that sense of lost community in spiritual evolution is a big one because you know our churches offer that community, you know, and um, and many of them, at least the ones I was a part of, you know, if you believe a certain way, you're in. But if those beliefs change, well, not so much. And there's a, I use this word sensitively, you know, a trauma in the severing of some of that, you know, and 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 the re reformation, you know, of new community. But that's 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 again just something that I really appreciate about the group spiritual direction mm -hmm. experience. It's that sense of community and belonging. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think these um these substances that's that's like one of the greatest greatest gifts um that yes. they've offered is this reconnection both to ourselves, to community, to earth. Um, but it takes exploring. And I think um, you know, as as we, as we see this kind of continually evolving and emerging field there's not as much emphasis on the integration and this ongoing work with uh, with the meaning making of these experiences which are sometimes just so utterly profound and um sometimes like obliterating to everything we thought we knew um and to really have a safe space to explore that is i think not just a good thing i think it's essential Alyssa, let me talk, just as I've been listening and thinking about about what we're doing together. Well, I'm really struck by the fact how many people are in these groups, uh, including Stacy, who's not who's not had an experience, but are discerning that. And mm -hmm. discernment is a word that gets thrown around in church circles a lot, <laughs> and sometimes sometimes accurately, and sometimes not. But one of the places that it's used accurately and and it's, I think, too focused on clergy, but at least in, the, in my tradition, the Episcopal Church, there's a lot of language around discernment for ordination, whether it's to the diaconate or the priesthood, and there's a whole process for that. The church has a very involved process for people who feel called to ordain life, and it's both my own, for me, my own sense of call, and then does the community also discern that call, mm -hmm. and uh, that affirms it. It's affirmed, it's affirmed in the community, so and it's always frustrated me that that beautiful gift of the church is really restricted to the religious professionals. Mm. And so much of church life is restricted to the religious professionals. And I think one of the things I've tried to do in my ministry is to open that up more and say, this is not just about the clergy. In fact, it's not about the clergy. Our role is to support people in their walk with Jesus in the case of Christianity. So to bring the gift of discernment, and often happens in spiritual direction, often individually with a spiritual director, but can happen in a group too, which is what we're doing, to discern is this the time for me to, is, am I called to have this experience? Is it the right thing for me? It's not for everybody. And at some point, it, have I had enough of these experiences? And now is it time to fully integrate them and, you know, move into the next stage of my life? I mean, they're all in different places, but I think the gift of discernment, the spiritual practice of discernment mm -hmm. used right, cor used correctly and for everyone and it, it's not a big, it's not complicated. It's just getting together with people and saying, here's what I'm thinking and feeling. Right. How does that land with you? And that's I'm thinking about trying mushrooms. A friend of mine has some. <laughs> How does that land with you? Well, here's, you know, here's, let's talk about it. So yeah. again, I think the, the gift of discernment is a gift. Of, it's not just for Christians, but it's one of the things we lift up. Yes. Uh, and yes. I, I think it's really important. I mean, obviously, yes. I, mean, I do. And I think it's one of the things we're offering in this. Mm -hmm. that's about keeping people safe that's about keeping people safe and yeah. uh and having people further along the path which each of these groups have people in different stages of this mm -hmm. is the wisdom of the group mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. so. i love you talking about discernment too and it's what's coming up for me with that is just the organic process of spiritual direction or group spiritual direction, it just provides this opportunity to kind of explore that in, in a really embodied way. Yeah. Um, yeah. You get to kind of, you have these sounding boards to bounce this off of as you're, as you're feeling into this discernment place. Cause I think that's been kind of hampered in a lot of us just uh, culturally in our upbringing. We're not, we don't trust ourselves. We don't touch into this discernment piece. Um, and when, you know, I think a, a lot of people have experienced through this path, just this, very embodied experiential relationship to God 
where it's it's alive and moving. Um, but there's also just this process of learning that language. It's a whole new language sometimes uh, that we're not connected to. Mm-hmm. And so having other people at different places in that path to kind of carve out and, and explore what does this mean? What, it, what am I facing here? Mm-hmm. And that experience of discernment is uh, one of the... Um, results or outgrowths of the community. And I think if there's a, if there's an area where we talk about this, you were psychedelic, not, I don't want to say psychedelics has failed, but in the West, there's been this premium of kind of the one-on-one therapeutic model, Mm -hmm. which again is helpful and useful. But if we think, you know, the indigenous use of plant medicines um, for, for centuries, you know, millennia, perhaps, you know, have been the communal experience. This is about, this is about strengthening the community. And so, um, again, to have the exploration of that, the discernment of that experienced in community is very um, edifying. Yeah. And I just, you know, I want to add that um, initially I thought, you know, is there going to be a space for me as somebody who hasn't had this experience yet as somebody who is in the the active process of discernment and um there's not been you know any difference between me and the other people in the group in that way um in fact it's it it's never it's never been really like it, it it's never come up in my mind while we've been talking and i've never been treated differently by anybody in the group because i haven't had that you know that that we're all sort of still looking for the same thing, essentially, whether we've done it, um, you know, through plant medicine or, or not, um, you know, and, and I know it's, it's also helped me kind of settle into, because I, I am such a, um, a seeker. I'm usually like, okay, next thing, next thing, next thing. And it's, it's helped me settle into the, okay, this is going to happen when it's going to happen. Like I fully believe in the organic, like, I'm not, I'm not scrambling. I'm not trying to, you know, I just know that when the time is right, I believe that, you know, the opportunity is going to present itself and I'm going to know that that's the direction that I need to move in. And it's been really um, calming for me, you know, as somebody who is always, you know, searching and striving. And you've heard that in me, Alyssa, you know, like, I'm just, I'm such a, you know, crazy seeker sometimes and um it settled me Mm. quite a bit you know so that um i really feel like you know the doors are going to open when they're supposed to open Mm. you know and that's been a real gift of the experience for me Mm. Mm. i think the other piece too that um it's just bringing up for me after you spoke of kind of not related, but in some ways, just the restoration of our humanity. We've got this group of people coming together that are strangers and like Joy mentioned, just an expansive array of um, age and different backgrounds and everybody just comes and is so human, so utterly human um, and beautiful and curious and wondering and trying to navigate this mystery and um, it's a really incredible experience and we've got people who are working in the religious sector we've got people like Stacy's talked about recovery and we've got trauma and we've got all these different things that come together but there's just this sweet sweet space of just getting to be human and uh, not know all the answers um, and just kind of wonder together Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to, we've got five more minutes. So if there's any last minute questions, absolutely open for that. If not, I'd love to close us out with uh, another poem if I can find. Yeah. I guess one question might be um, when you anticipate the next round um, starting up. So I am thinking within the next month or two, probably within the next 
yeah, month or two, we will have probably two groups starting. Um, the majority of our, our other groups, they'll be ending July, but um, we are very close to getting the next one launched. And what we'll do, what we did last time is those that are on this call have first access. And so um, you'll get an email with um, those launch dates and registration for that. And if anybody's got any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And I can put my email in the chat box as well. Um, and we'll send out the bios for those that are going to be hosting the groups in the time, time zones. And we really try since our community is all over the country and, and beyond um, to, to have offering times that are suitable for all the time zones. Um, Feel free to reach out if you've got questions or want to explore more. My email's in the chat box. With that, I will close us off with one more poem from, thank you all so much for being here. Donna Fald's poem from the same book. Time enough. The wisdom voice says, be still. Take time for what is truly important. I imagine myself driving, leaving behind an untidy trail of what's not needed. I cast aside worry, which has never brought me anything even remotely useful. I let go of doubt and all the countless ways I tie myself in knots. Scattered behind me like discarded clothes are old beliefs, selfish agendas, my fixed and false identities attachment to particular results. Weightless and miraculously free, my eyes shine with wonder and enthusiasm. The wisdom voice says, there is always time enough for joy. Thank you so much for being here and for being a part of Ligare. Absolutely wonderful to see all your faces and get to meet some new people. And James and Stacy, thank you so, so, so much for sharing. And Joy, thank you for jumping in and sharing as well. And Hunt, as always, thank you for all the work you're doing. Yes. This is just so, I, I mean, I, when I started this, I really didn't know. I mean, I had a few ideas about things, but it's really been unfolding the last three years in particular. And it's just to sit back and see what's happening is um, incredible. And the interest that's out there. And I think what, I think helping the church find its ministry is one of the things in this. That's really, that's, I've got a lot of passion for that. Mm. Like how can we be places where people can bring these experiences and be for them to be valued as any other mystical experience would be? Mm. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be everywhere, but it, I think it could be other places, right? It could be places right now. And that's that's my hope, too, for this. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, thank you all. Thank you. All right. This will be recorded and available uh, in the way we keep it on our YouTube channel just for informational purposes. So, you go back to see it. But.